Welcome to the Son of Celluloid Show. Son of Celluloid! 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 is filmed before a dead studio audience. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Celluloid Central and the very first episode of the Sun Celluloid Show. Some of you out there might be asking yourselves, who is this Sun Celluloid dude and what is he doing on YouTube? So I'll include you into what's going on here. For about the last three and a half years, I have been horror blogger extraordinaire at... Shut up. At the Sun Celluloid website, www.sunofcelluloid.com. Keep an eye over there, because just as I'm doing the web show now, does not mean I'm giving up all my blogging duties. Now, uh, about two years ago, I started filming interviews to show on the YouTube channel. And the thought started occurring to me, how cool would it be to do a web show? But I don't know the first thing about filmmaking. Uh, yeah, I have a film degree, but they basically didn't let me touch camera the whole time. Then slowly, the idea started gestating. Some of my favorite movies of all time had been made by people who had absolutely no clue what they were doing. They just got some buddies together and uh, threw together whatever kind of cheap-ass equipment they could and made their stuff on pure passion. And that kind of inspired me to uh, gather together and uh, cobble up whatever kind of crappy equipment I could and take my complete lack of technical knowledge and a little help from my friends and share my love of horror with each and every one of you. So basically, we're going to be giving you interviews with some of your favorite horror icons. I'm going to be telling you about some indie horror flicks, because, you know, we're all about indie horror here at Son of Celluloid. But clue you in on some of those that might have flown under your radar. And we'll just do whatever kind of wacky hijinks pop into this sick little noggin. Now, it's been a long time coming. I kind of think Freddy vs. Jason might have had a shorter development period. But it's finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in. The Son of Celluloid show is on the air. His interviews come from the darkest bits of hell. Could you give me any uh, memories you have of working on uh, The Pit and the Pendulum? Stuart Gordon and Lance Henriksen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 there are a couple. <laughs> do tell, sir, do tell. Uh, let's keep it to the ones that can be spoken of because they're no longer with us, and it would be Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed, Richard Burton, Peter O'Toole, and Richard Harris are four of the greatest actors out of England. I mean, Oliver Reed is phenomenal, is, uh, but they're also the most insane alcoholics to have ever been presented to the planet. And this is true of Oliver Reed. I mean, he literally got thrown off the plane once it landed in Italy. They escorted him off. He was that drunk. And they let him off before anybody else. He got into the van that was there to pick him up and had to stop four times for wine in an hour and a half trip to the location. Once he got there, he was blitzed out of his mind. I mean, I thought I was a drinker. I am an am or I was an amateur <laughs> by comparison. I've never seen anybody, anybody consume that much liquor consistently. In fact, at one point, we're all having dinner at the table, and he didn't want to get up from the table, and he just took a wine bottle and pissed in it right there at the table. There you go. You know? When nature calls. <laughs> and it was, it was startling to see, but then once he got on set, he never took a drink until the end of the day. But once that day ended, it began. It yeah. was on. You know, and then, of course, the chance to work with Lance Hendrickson was fabulous. He turned out to be just one of the all-time great people that you can ever be in, on a set with. 
Uh, but that, I think I think that's where I'll stop it's because the rest of the stories are dealing with. I'm sure, the statute of limitations has run out. No, no, there's no sta <laughs> there's no statute of limitations for hostility and vengeance. And now it's time for great horror quotes with Joe's mom. This episode, The Devil's Rejects. Boy, the next word that comes out of your mouth better be some brilliant fucking Mark Twain shit. Because it's definitely getting chiseled on your tombstone. This has been Great Horror Quotes with Joe's mom. Hey there, cellmates. It's time for this episode's Indie Horror Spotlight. Now, what do you get when you mix a whole lot of tits and blood, some drugs and alcohol, and the devil himself? Well, you get a party here at Celluloid Central, but you also get time to kill, which is a new flick coming at you from Mostly Harmless Pictures. Now, Brian Williams directed it, and Ellie Church stars in it. And if you remember, that's the same star and director combo that brought us Play Me, which was one of the standout shorts on the Collective Volume 6. If you don't have the collective volume six, you need to remedy that immediately. Now, in this flick, Sarah finds out that she has 24 hours to live. So she does what you or I or anyone else would do in that situation. She goes on a killing spree to settle some old scores. Now, throughout her adventure, she picks up a uh, beautiful cohort by the name of Layla, and together they find themselves at Sarah's old stomping grounds, a strip club called The Chop Shop. Once they get there, all hell breaks loose, and it just might be a little more than Sarah bargained for. Now, this is one of those loving tribute, homage, throwback flicks to the grindhouse slash drive-in slash exploitation movies from the 60s and 70s. As such, it does have some of the visual trap, a lot of the visual trappings, actually, of the new wave of old school. That being the fake film grain filters and the scene missing gags and all that kind of stuff. Now, if I have one caveat about this movie, is that honestly, I don't feel like any of that was necessary. Because what's way more important than the visual emulation is that this is a true spiritual successor to the real deal. Basically, it takes that unmistakable flavor of the grime and sleaze of those old exploitation classics, and it kind of marries it with the attitude of the modern indie horror underground. Uh, it's got a ton of blood, wall-to-wall -wall gratuitous nudity. It's got, it even tries to emulate the uh, drive-in experience with a intermission section, which has got some really funny animations, some really cool stuff in there. It's got a great soundtrack, which is something a lot of uh, movies honestly ignore these days. Uh, it's got some trippy drug sequences. I mean, it's pretty much got everything you could possibly want from this kind of movie. Now, Ellie Church stars as Sarah. And this flick, she's all sex and slaughter, man. She She's basically a kind of half Miss September and half Miss 45, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, she shows she's got some acting chops, too. Yeah, she does a really good job. Actually, the whole cast does a good job. Uh, Charlie Moon's good as Layla. We got uh, Jason Hignite as Jason. Uh, Edward Gracie plays Steve, the bartender. I mean, the whole cast just kind of knocks it out of the park. Uh, one thing I really dug about this flick and deserves a special mention is the editing. Uh, Brian Williams has a really unorthodox, fresh editing style. A lot of the scenes have a weird cut rhythm, you know, the cuts don't really come where you think they normally would, and it, it's a really cool vibe to it, you know, something you don't see every day. Uh, a lot of the other scenes kind of go on longer than you would expect, you know, there'll be a scene that just really lingers on one dancer and the jiggling boobs, or Satan smoking a cigarette, or something like that, and they just go on, and they become hypnotic, and you really can't look away, and you really get drawn into it. So, you know, Brian, you deserve mad kudos for the editing in this flick, it's You've got a really cool style. I dig it. Now, uh, this is a movie that I would highly recommend. It's one of those all-killer, no-filler flicks. Uh, if you'll remember back to my pre-Days of the Dead videos, I talked about how I was doing a super-secret feature screening. Time to Kill was it. And everyone that saw it there absolutely raved about it. Now, since then, it's had its premiere at Horror Hound, and it's currently making the convention circuit. So uh, look at the lineup of a convention near you. See if it's playing. If it's playing, get there and see it. Doesn't matter what you have to do to do it, just do it. Now, uh, there was a limited edition VHS run done for the convention circuit that I'm pretty sure is all sold out. But the good news is it is coming to DVD. Now, these DVDs are first going to be available at Cinema Wasteland in Ohio. That's April 
4th, 5th, and 6th. And then on the 7th, that Monday, they will be available online for the rest of us. Those DVDs may or may not feature a quote from yours truly on the uh, cover. So that may or may not be another reason to get it. Now, what you're going to want to do is go to Mostly Harmless Pictures website. I'm going to put that URL right down there. Or you could uh, go to Time to Kill's Facebook page. That's where you're going to get all the info about where to get the DVD and how to order it and where it's going to be playing and all that kind of good stuff. So Time to Kill, man, is going to give you your fill of booze and babes and boobs and blood and Beelzebub. Perfect kind of flick to, you know, pop in, get tanked with your friends, watch and enjoy. So pick up a copy of Time to Kill. You don't want to miss this one, folks. Trust me, if I ever steered you wrong before. And as always, we sound the son of celluloid battle cry. Support independent horror. This interview's come on the darkest bits of hell. Hello folks, it's Nathan Hamilton, son of Sony Lloyd, hanging out here at Days of the Dead, and I am stoked to be talking to the great Tom Tolls. Yes, it's... the great. Do not forget that. The great. I, you're not the first person to tell me that this weekend, <laughs> actually. <laughs> now, um, I've talked to some people throughout the con, and uh, one thing people say when they meet you, they're like, he was a really nice guy. So people seem to be shocked by that, because I guess you play scumbags and assholes <laughs> through people. Get you confused <laughs> like that? Fuck, man. You know, I hate it when people say that shit. You know, I'm not. I'm a horrible person. I'm mean. <laughs> I'm vile. I'm despicable. Don't you ever forget that. And then some guy comes along and you just say a couple of nice things like, Hello, how are you? It's nice right. to meet you. You don't even have to fucking mean it. And they think you're a nice guy. Well, it's not true. This guy's a prick. I can stand up for thank him. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Hey, no problem. Well, I appreciate it, brother. It's the nicest I thing anyone's I'm, ever said about me. I got yeah. a reputation to support here. <laughs> I would like to thank you for sitting here and talking to me. And I hate to tell you, but after sitting here talking to you, you're a little less hateable now. You bastard. You had to say that on <laughs> camera? I did. Damn it. Get the fuck away from me. I, we're right, done. We're I, done. I, I got to leave. I'm no longer welcome here. <laughs> Stay with Son of Celluloid. <laughs> True horror on that night Said a few wrong words now Nothing's alright She was possessed on that night On that night She let out a chilling scream As I held her head That's all the time we got for this episode, folks. I can thank everyone for tuning in. Keep an eye over at www.sonofcelluloid.com because I'm going to be giving away an autographed copy of the Casket Creatures new EP this week. Also this week, you want to keep an eye on the YouTube channel because I'll be posting the entire Tom Tolls interview that you saw clips from on this show. You can also find me on the Picking Brains podcast, the last couple episodes of the Horror 101 podcast, and the most recent episode of the Bastards of the Universe podcast where we're talking my other love, professional wrestling. If you liked what you saw in this episode, if you didn't like what you saw in this episode, if you got suggestions or uh, anything like that, I want you to email me at fromhell13 at aol.com. Let me know what you thought, or you can just put a comment right down there. And uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, and we will see you next time on the Son of Celluloid Show. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold up. Come back. One more thing. Rest in peace, odorous urungus. <laughs> All hail the scum dogs. His interview.